Hey, Kev. It's me. And so then we all began to call and text Kevin and say, Kevin, come on, let's talk. What's going on here? And we would get text messages back saying, I'm OK. I just want to be left alone. I told Morgan, take care of the business. I need to get away. Don't bother me. That was the answer we were getting. When Kevin's family tried to reach him by phone, calls went unreturned. But the texts kept coming in. Not hearing his voice made us nervous. And we thought, why can't he call us if he's OK? And there was something else. Kevin didn't sound like himself. Kevin's messages would be very short and brief. He would use uh, the letter U instead of Y-O-U. And he wouldn't use punctuation and proper grammar. And all of a sudden, it was always proper spelling, proper punctuation. And Kevin doesn't text like that. And Kevin wasn't the only one acting strangely. Just one week after Kevin disappeared, his wife, 34-year-old mother of three, Morgan, had a new live-in boyfriend, Steve Chappelle, a 21-year-old who worked for Kevin's landscaping business. The pretense was that Kevin wanted Uncle Steve, according to Morgan, to be there to watch over the kids while he was away. And it looked like Uncle Steve was really taking his new role seriously. He was seen holding Morgan's hand at her apartment complex pool and riding around in Morgan's truck, taking the kids out for ice cream. They acted as if they had been a couple forever. It was very bizarre. And the entire family just kept asking us, are, are you kidding me? I, I just can't believe this. So police brought Morgan's new boy toy in to have a friendly chat about why he was holding hands with the boss's wife. I said, it's not a crime to have an affair with a married woman, but it is a crime to lie to the police. And that's when he stopped and he paused for a moment. He says, OK, well, yeah, we are having an intimate affair. According to Steve, Morgan the cougar came on to him. She would tell him how uh, handsome he was, and, and he fell for it. And they first had intercourse in a pickup truck at a job site, and then they had intercourse a couple times at the shop. And I asked him, I said, well, did Kevin find out about this? And no, 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 Kevin didn't find out. But now Kevin was missing, and detectives had an idea Steve might be leaving out a few details. I said, well, is it possible that Morgan did something to Kevin? And Morgan is going to set you up. She's going to say that you're having an affair with her. You fell in love with her, and something happened to Kevin. And she's going to blame this entire thing on you. And he starts to cry and tells me that he doesn't want to answer any more questions. Suddenly, Kevin's absence was looking a lot more suspicious. He had disappeared into thin air, and police would soon learn that's exactly where they had to look to find him again. Police believed there was more to the story, and so did Kevin's family. And when his mother got a text message from Morgan asking to take care of the children for a couple of days, Chris, come here a minute. Kevin's family was instantly suspicious. And my son Chris was there, and he said that she's getting ready to bolt. They knew Morgan better than we did, so they decided to sit on the apartment all night long. Early the next morning, Kevin's brother, Chris, spotted Steve leaving Morgan's apartment. That's him. He's walking out. He's got a bag. Morgan came out with more bags and carried them to her truck. They're getting yeah, in the truck now. Chris called the police. Can I get hold of Detective Maurer real quick? His wife and the new boyfriend are making a move right now to leave. They're leaving. They're leaving. Chris followed behind. But Morgan and Steve didn't go very far, only down the road to Kevin's landscaping business. As it happened, Detective Maurer was already there working a hunch. I was hoping maybe Kevin was sleeping in a shop at night and hiding from Morgan. And I look up. And in comes Morgan's pickup truck. Steve's staring straight ahead. And Morgan gets out of the pickup truck and walks right by and brushes by my shoulder. And I said, wow, that's, you know, that's, that's odd. As Detective Maurer turned to talk to Morgan, Steve took off. So I turned to Morgan. I said, what's going on? She has this dumbfounded look on her face. 
Things aren't looking too good with Steve, are they? Says, oh my God, maybe he did do something to Kevin. Detective Maurer immediately put out an alert for Steve and took Morgan to the police station to figure out what was going on. Steve has been staying at your place, but Kevin's your husband. Correct. Did you ever think that maybe Kevin would come home and Steve would be there and there would be an issue? No, I hadn't thought about that. Are you looking for trouble? No, I'm not. It's poor judgment. Poor judgment, but it also makes me think that somebody knew that Kevin wasn't going to come home. And Morgan wanted to make sure that police understood the somebody who knew Kevin wasn't going to come home was Steve Chappelle. Steve had said to me that he loved me and would do whatever it took to have me. Do you think maybe Steve hurt Kevin? Steve hit Kevin in the back of the head with a shovel. Did you catch that? Let's listen again. Steve hit Kevin in the back of the head with a shovel. Whoa, you know, I, I said, OK, why, why didn't you tell me this earlier? Are you trying to protect Steve? Not at this point. Were you? No. Then why wouldn't you tell me that stuff? I don't know. We knew something was seriously wrong. But we didn't know if Kevin was alive, if they had done something to Kevin. We, we didn't know what the story was. And Morgan wasn't very forthcoming. So police held her in an interview room while they contacted cell phone companies, hoping to track Steve by the GPS in his phone. They didn't find Steve, but they did discover an enormous amount of text messages between Steve and Morgan. These people text like they breathe and there's thousands and thousands of text messages. Somewhere in that mass of data could be vital information about Kevin's disappearance, but getting at it seemed almost impossible. It was very confusing because text messages are not in chronological order with conversation. They're in chronological order by time. Police put together a team of officers. They spent hours sifting through the mountains of text messages. We began reading the conversations, and we were yelling them over the cubicles back and forth so that we could make sense of what it was that they were talking about. At first, they saw hints, glimpses of something dark and chilling. Then suddenly, it was uh, mid-afternoon when we had gotten to the point we were learning exactly what had gone on. And it wasn't good. Kevin Mengel had been a victim of foul play. And Steve Chappelle and Morgan Mengel's text messages were a literal play-by-play -play of the deadly plan. As a widow, Morgan would get everything, the kids, the company, and her freedom. And with Steve's help, she could make that happen. Morgan Mengel repeatedly told Stephen Chappelle that if Kevin would go away, that he could have the business and the two of them would be happy ever after. Using the text messages as a narrative, police could finally lay out the Lovebird's toxic plot. It started with research on the internet. That's where Morgan and Steve found the recipe for liquid nicotine. A few concentrated drops can be lethal. At 7.57 p.m. on June 19, 2010, Steve was at his mom's house cooking up the nicotine. His sous chef, Morgan, checked in. Once Steve cooked the nicotine down, he put it into a bottle of Kevin's favorite iced tea. Then he gave it to Morgan. And then in the morning, puts it on Kevin's truck for Kevin to drink. Just as they'd hoped, Kevin drank the iced tea. Then he drank some more. Everything was moving along according to plan. Well, almost. After two hours, Kevin was still going strong. It wasn't fatal, but it was enough that it may have started to make him nauseous or feel lightheaded or something like that. 
they were still optimistic that their special recipe would do the job. But just in case, they had a backup plan. As Kevin is working on the hedge trimmer, Steve comes from behind and hits him over the head, hits him hard enough, and the shovel actually breaks in half. Kevin is still alive. He grabs his second shovel, hits him a second time, and a third time. That shovel also breaks in half. But at this time, he thinks Kevin is deceased. He, he stops breathing. steps right over her dead husband's body and gives him a kiss. 